But suffice it to say that the ministry has already stepped in. Um, we've already worked with, again, with SAFRI to be able to make sure last night that they were accommodated. We've already had them assigned um, to be evaluated and have assigned them residents. So currently, they're, by the end of the day, they will be in a, accommodations that are safe, where the two of them could be together. And they're going to be exposed to a lot of training and assessments to see if they could actually live on their own, to be able to, to have independent living. Um, the ministry is working to make sure that that happens, whether it's through welfare, uh, the NDU, and so on. So we're transitioning now. Um, the NDU will also be making sure that the persons, both of them, go for their medical appointments and get their checkups and so on. So all that is happening now, the evaluations. We also have to look and see if they need um, some kind of physiotherapist to be able to help them. The story that I saw, honestly, was, was heart-wrenching. You know, and as I said, at, she said they were on the street for, for two years. It's my understanding that, you know, it wasn't exactly two years, but the amount of months, a few months, still too long um, between last year and this year. It's still too long. Um, there are gaps, as I said earlier, in our provisioning. Um, even if I look outside of this case, when a disabled person at 18, because, you know, up to, church, up to 18 you're a child, and Child Care Board provides some facility, but after that, there are really no facilities in Barbados. And that is one of the things that we identified even before this case came to the fore. That for persons with disabilities, especially with severe disabilities, that there needs to be a facility that would allow them to be able to benefit from some kind of treatment, some kind of assessment. So the public can rest assured that they slept well last night. The public can rest assured that they will sleep well again tonight. That the various facets of the government, and particularly the Ministry of People's Empowerment, is already working with them to help them transition to this. I think it is for me a lesson learned and for all of us an opportunity to focus with like almost laser light precision on the issues that affect persons with disabilities. And I am thankful that the public reacted the way that they did because it tells us that the collective conscience of Barbados is still alive.